Chris the Magic Hamster. I live on Magic Mountain with my twin sister, Doris. Say hello, Doris. Hello. I say, Morris, mm -hmm. isn't it cold and windy on Magic Mountain today? Yes, freezing. I know. Let's sing our song and warm ourselves up. Good idea. Are you ready? Yes. We go round the mountain, singing our very own song. When we're on our way, we shout hooray with a rat a tat tat and a bing bang bong. Magic is what we like to do, and if it goes wrong, we cry boo hoo. But on a good day, we shout hooray with a rat a tat tat and a bing bang bong. One more time, Morris. I'm ready if you are, Doris. Everybody now. Here we go round the mountain, singing our very own song. Yes, we're on our way, so shout hooray with a rat a tat tat and a bing bang bong. Morris goes flying. It was a windy day on Magic Mountain. I was sitting on the grass with Doris, and we were wondering what to do. The wind was blowing hard. So hard that our fur stood up in funny little tufts. Up in the sky, there were little white clouds dancing and floating in the wind. And then I had a brilliant idea. All right, Doris, I was just getting to that bit. Doris had an idea. Morris, she said, wouldn't it be fun to be a little cloud dancing and floating in the wind? I don't talk like that, Morris. Shush! Listen to my story. I bet I could make myself into a cloud, I said, and I ran to get my magic wand. What are you doing, Morris? cried Doris, running after me. Are you going to be a cloud forever? No, silly. I'm just going to make myself light enough to float around a bit. Now, hold on to the end of this string while I tie the other end round my middle. I looked in my magic book and found a magic spell for clouds. It went like this. rat a tat tat Bing-bang-bong. Up in the air, you can't go wrong. I danced seven circles one way and seven circles the other way, waving my magic wand. Doris kept hold of the string round my middle. Morris, she said, I'm getting dizzy and you're not floating at all. But just as she said that, I suddenly felt all light and fluffy. The wind lifted me right off my feet into the air. Oh, Morris, you're doing it. You're a little fluffy floating cloud, cried Doris. I floated higher and higher. Don't let go of the string, Doris! At last, the string wouldn't let me go any higher, and I floated from side to side. Oh, it was fun! I floated on my back and pretended to be on the sea. Then I turned over and had a good look down at Magic Mountain. I could see the tops of trees and a stream that looked like a shiny blue ribbon. Could you see me? Could you see me? Yes, Doris. Doris looked like a tiny brown speck on the ground. Only a speck? Yes, just a little speck in the distance. Huh. Shh, now please don't interrupt. A bluebird came flying by and chirruped. Fancy, a brown cloud. I've never seen a brown cloud before. I'm not a cloud, I'm a hamster, I replied. A hamster, twittered the bluebird. Then what are you doing up here? I wanted to be up in the sky like a cloud, I said. I'm magic, you see. I can stay up in the sky without being magic, said the bluebird, 
and he flew away. Suddenly, there was a gust of wind, and I began to feel rather sick. I called down as loudly as I could, Quick, Doris! Pull me in! Pull me in! Doris tied the end of the string to a tree and went to look for her book of magic spells. She danced seven circles one way and seven the other and waved her wand. Then she said her spell. Can I say it, please? Oh, all right. Bing, bang, bong, bat-a-tat-tat. Down on the ground it's safe and flat. Bump! I fell flat on my back. <laughs> Ouch! I think she'd said the spell much too fast, but I was so pleased to be back on the ground again, I didn't really mind. At lunchtime, I ate lots of dumplings and rice pudding, just to make sure I'd never float away again. Morris. Very nice story. <sighs> Especially the bit about me. Hmm. Now, why don't I sing a song? You? Oh, no, Doris. Well, I want to be a star. A star? Yes. Someone everybody knows. Famous. Oh, I see. I thought you meant a star in the sky. Oh, that's another kind of star, silly. Hey, Morris, hmm? what do you have to do to be a star? Um, twinkle? Oh, Morris. <gasps> Here's my favourite star, Stephen. Doris? Yes, terrific. I don't suppose you tell stories, too. Well, it's funny you should say that. I have got a story I'd like to tell you. Oh, oh what? Come on. Now settle down, Morris. <laughs> it's called Kind King Peter. <laughs> king Peter was a very kind king. He always said good morning and good night to everyone in his kingdom. Every morning, King Peter opened his bedroom door and said good morning to all his servants. Then he said good morning to Sam the guard. He walked to the village and said good morning to the postmistress, good morning, your majesty. the policeman, good morning, your majesty. and the milkman. Good morning, Your Majesty. Next, he popped into the village school and said, Good morning! to all the children. And the children replied, Good, Good morning, morning, Your Majesty. Majesty! When night came, King Peter said, Good night! to the children, the milkman, the policeman and the postman, to Sam the guard and all his servants. But when he had finished saying, Good night! 
King Peter was too tired to eat his supper, and he went straight to bed. One day, King Peter did not wake up. Everyone was very worried. When the doctor arrived, Sam the guard asked, Why is he so tired? I don't know, replied the doctor. I've pinched him and shaken him. I've shouted boo in his ear, but he still won't wake up. The doctor did not know what to do. Then Sam the guard had an idea. I'll ask Uncle Toby. Uncle Toby was an inventor and he was very clever. He gave Sam a bottle of medicine for the king and he gave him something that looked like a trumpet. What's that for, Uncle Toby? asked Sam. It's called a loudspeaker, replied Uncle Toby. You speak through the narrow end and your voice comes out very loud the other end, like this. Boom! His voice came out so loud it blew Sam's helmet off. <whistles> Sam poured a spoonful of Uncle Toby's medicine into the king's mouth. Straight away, King Peter woke up. He jumped out of bed and said, Oh, now I feel much better. Uh, quick, I must say good morning to everyone. Sam gave him the loudspeaker. Uh, try doing it with this, he said. King Peter ran out at once onto the balcony and shouted, Good morning, everyone! Through the loudspeaker, and everyone in the kingdom shouted back, Good morning, Your Majesty! Then King Peter sat down and ate the biggest breakfast you ever saw. And he was never ill again. Hello, Morris. Hello, Doris. I've just been making the most delicious little cakes. La, la, oh, la, Oh, you're not going to sing, la, la, are la, you? It's no use trying to stop me. I've just got to sing about cakes. You can clap along with me if you like. Pat a cake, pat a cake, baker's man. Bake me a cake as fast as you can. Break it and pat it and mark. you mark your cake with B? B for baby, silly. But your name's Doris, and that begins with D. All right, you can sing this song with any letter. Come along, Morris, it's your turn now. Pat a cake, pat a cake, baker's man. Bake me a cake as fast as you can. Prick it and pat it and mark it with D and put it in the oven for Doris and me. Did you make, Doris? Round ones, square ones, oblong ones, and, of course, star-shaped ones. Yes, I thought you might make a star-shaped one. Well, a star is my favourite shape. Any more stories, Morris? Of course. Denise has got a story, haven't you, Denise? Yes. It's all about the ugly duckling. Down in the farmyard, Mother Duck was sitting on her eggs. She had 
four fine speckled eggs. Slowly she counted them. One, quack, two, quack, three, four, quack, quack, five, quack. That's funny. I thought I only laid four eggs. One, two, three. Just then the first egg began to hatch. Out popped a fluffy yellow chick. Mother Duck was delighted. Then three more eggs began to hatch and out popped three more fluffy yellow chicks. Quack, 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 quack. Mother Duck was so proud. Last of all, the fifth egg hatched and out poked a little head. Eep, eep. Quack, quack, cried Mother Duck. It was not a fluffy yellow chick, but a big brown untidy chick with a knobbly beak and enormous feet. Oh dear, oh, oh dear, you're not very beautiful, my dear, quack, quack. The other chicks took one look at the ugly duckling and began to laugh. Gregory Goose came to visit Mother Duck. When he saw the ugly duckling, he frowned and hissed. I don't like the way he looks. Oh, no, ah, no, not one bit. Mother Duck led her babies down to the pond for their first swim. But when they got there, all the other ducks laughed at the ugly duckling. How unkind they were. Am I so big and untidy and brown? said the ugly duckling, and a tear trickled down his beak. He went to see the red hen. Why, why, why does everyone laugh at me, red hen? But she only pecked at him and said, Go away! You're not a proper duck! We don't want your sort round here! At last, the ugly duckling felt so unhappy that he crept away into the reeds by the river and hid himself there. All winter he hid out of the icy wind. Nobody came to look for him, not even Mother Duck. Then, one spring morning, he heard a strange noise in the sky and looked up. A family of swans was flying over with wide white wings and long white necks and brilliant orange beaks. Oh, why, why can't I be beautiful like them? thought the ugly duckling. Why did I have to be such an ugly duckling? He pushed the reeds aside and swam out onto the river. At once, a voice said, my, what a lovely swan! Where, where, thought the ugly duckling. I must hide again, or the swan may laugh at me. There on the bank, he saw two children pointing and saying, Look at the lovely swan. And oh, where were they pointing? Who were they pointing at? They're pointing at me, cried the ugly duckling. He bent his neck he blinked the tears out of his eyes. He looked at himself in the shining water. It was like a mirror. And what did he see in the water? It wasn't an ugly duckling with brown untidy feathers. It wasn't an ugly duckling with a knobbly beak and enormous feet. In fact, it wasn't ugly at all. It was a beautiful young swan with wide white wings and a long white neck and a brilliant orange beak. I might have been ugly, but I wasn't an ugly duckling. I wasn't a duckling at all. I was a swan all the time. And stretching out his long white neck, and beating the air with his wide white wings, he flew off home. Maurice, what's that noise?
noise. Shh! Listen! What is a box? A box is something good to play in. When you stay in. It could be a car or a sailing boat so you can float. It could be a table for you and me to have tea. It could be a horse who's fast and strong for riding along. It could be a pram or a smart push chair for you and your bear. It could be an island in the sea with a tree. It could be a house to go inside and hide. Ready or not, here I come. Or it could be a box for keeping toys in. And boys in. <laughs> Lovely. When I get home to Magic Mountain, I'm going to find a great big cardboard box to play with. Can I join in? <sighs> of course you can, Morris. You are my brother after all. But before we go home to Magic Mountain, I want to tell you another story about one of our friends there. Who? Dotty the Magic Dragon. Oh, what's the story called? Dotty the Magic Dragon, of course. Dotty never went out without first doing the washing up. But she promised to visit her friend next door. So she picked up her magic dish mop and waved it at the sink. Now get all the washing up done before I return, she said and scuttled off. Hot water gushed from the tap and the washing up liquid squirted from the bottle. Soon, the sink was filled with hot, soapy water. The cups and plates began to tremble. They hated being washed up. The water splashed out of the sink and reached for a plate. Ugh, went the plate and bounded across the kitchen. This was a signal for the others. They jumped off the running board and were soon running about all over the floor. The water rose up, leapt from the sink and chased the crockery. The water ran here and there but couldn't catch a single cup. The tap was still running and more water overflowed from the sink. The dishes were having a great time sliding around the floor and laughing. The water splished and splashed after the plates and cups and saucers, but they slithered out of reach. Then a cup ran out of the kitchen door, followed by a giant wave. Dotty stood in the doorway. She opened her mouth and breathed out a short, sharp <gasps> tongue of fire. The water stopped in its tracks. Burke! cried Dotty. The cups and saucers and plates slowly crept back and piled themselves up on the draining board. The water sprang off the floor and back into the sink. Oh dear, said Dotty. My spell didn't really work. I'll just have to do the washing up myself. Washing up. How do you know? You never do any. <gasps> Don't be cheeky. Hey, Morris, have we got time for another song? I think so. 
Hey, here comes Dotty. Oh, go on, Dotty, sing us your song. Dragons are lovely, dragons are nice. If you need a dragon, she's there in a trice. Sometimes they're Dotty, and Dotty's my name. If you see a dragon, please sing this again. Come on, everyone! Come on! Dragons are wonderful, dragons are clever, dragons are beautiful, dragons forever. Dragons are wonderful, dragons are clever, dragons are beautiful, dragons.